Okay, so this recording is for the FET simulation on wave interference. Um, and I got to this window right here by Googling FET interference um, and then clicking the play icon on the simulation and it brought me here. Now waves was the previous lab, so we don't want that one. Let's click on interference and go from there. Um, so here's our interface. We have two sources. I have this wave source right here, we're just dripping water, and then I have another one. Turn that guy on, and uh, you can't get them to drip out of phase. They only drip in phase. Um, they both hit the water at the same time. And so I have two sources. Now if I just shut one of these off and let the other one go, let the top one go, it just makes circular wave fronts. We see that like so. And then if I include the other guy though, then I have waves occurring in the same space. And we know that waves occurring in the same space when they hit, hit, bump into each other or just occupy the same space. I don't like bump into because they're not colliding like cars. Um, they do occupy the same space and they uh, affect each other's amplitude, but they don't like bump off of each other. That's not really the way that works. Um, but as a result of these waves interfering, there are going to be points where crests meet crests and troughs meet troughs. If a crest meets a crest, we know that we get constructive interference and a larger or higher wave, higher amplitude wave. And if a trough meets a trough, we get a lower wave, which is still larger, even though it's deeper, the trough is deeper, that makes it a larger wave. So when waves are in phase, completely in phase where the phase difference is zero, that's maximum constructive interference and they make the largest wave they can make. Um, but when a crest meets a trough, they are completely out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase, and we call that maximum destructive interference. And if the crest and trough are the same size, then they completely cancel. Now, taking a look at this pattern as we see it right here, um, there are parts that are, we have like, the color is blue. I don't think you can change the color for the water. So it's either blue and black, but right in the center of this pattern, I see very clear black and blue waves moving outwards, um, up here towards the top of the screen as well, and down here. But in between those very clear, high contrast black and blue waves, there's like a muddy gray area of very little contrast, very low contrast, as if those black and blue waves are, are not there, as if they're canceling each other, which they are. Along that line right there, you can see there's like a line right along here, and that line is, uh, is a line of nodes. That is a set of points of maximum destructive interference, where the crests meet troughs and the waves cancel. If, you, if these were sound waves and you were standing there, you wouldn't hear much of anything. Um, under perfect conditions, you would literally hear nothing. Um, if these were water waves and you were in a wave pool, um, those were, would be points where there really are no waves at all. Um, and if you were over here though, along this line, then the waves would be very large, larger than normal, twice as large as normal. Um, so along this line right here, this is maximum constructive interference where we're getting uh, much larger waves. But along this line right here, there's destructive interference where crests are meeting troughs. It sets up a pattern, so we call it an interference pattern. Now the lab itself actually says to use speakers instead of dripping water, so let's do that. We'll use speakers instead, source one. One nice thing about the speakers is that it makes black and white waves, which are higher contrast. Now, if you don't know what contrast is, what I mean by contrast, um, these black and white waves are high contrast, especially at the speaker. You can see very clear uh, white circles and very clear black circles. Um, and actually, as the waves move outward, it gets a little muddier. Uh, not so black, not so white, a little bit closer to gray. Um, and we know that as a wave moves through the medium, its speed will not change. We see that in the picture here. Um, but as it loses, ener loses energy, it loses amplitude. Uh, that's also why for a person right next to the speaker, 
it's super loud, but, but for a person far away, it's quiet because the amplitude drops as the wave travels. But since the amplitude drops, there's less contrast between crests and troughs. They're closer to each other. And so we don't get the distinct black and white from the source. We get uh, more of a muddy, dark gray, light gray. And if I introduce a second source, making waves, I'm not really, if you look closely, there are little teeny tiny ripples that are created in the, when it first starts. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but they move away, and then now here's our pattern of uh, crests and troughs, the two waves kind of going together. But as we saw before with the water waves, there are these lines of gray where the black and the white kind of cancel out and there's nothing there. Um, well, if you know, black waves and white waves, like kind of like crests and troughs, represent large waves, then if the gray and the black kind of even out to nothing, to gray, you can kind of figure out what the contrast must represent. Like if you have high contrast by right next to the speaker, by the speaker, you're going to get large crests and large troughs. But where you see kind of gray, where the black and the white cancel out, there's not really much there, which makes sense. Those points there, those lines, are nodal lines, lines of nodes, points of maximum destructive interference. To illustrate this further, we can include, we'll have both the particles and the waves. And it's a little hard to follow, but the particles really dance the most over by the speakers, and they're dancing kind of less over here on this side. But you can see where the black and white waves are, where the contrast is the most, those the particles really jump around back and forth. If you kind of fix your eyes on that section, you can see that the particles, you know, transfer boom, boom, back and forth. Whereas along the lines, there's so many dots, I lost my cursor, here it is. Along this line of nodes, you can see that the particles just kind of sway back and forth, like not that much energy. You know, they have some energy, but not really. So the higher amplitude areas are where the black and white, you know, high contrast waves are, but the lower energy areas are along the nodes. To show that even further, we have our little pressure situation. And if I put one probe over here, put it along that line of black and white waves, we can see that there's a large pressure difference um, along that line. But if I stick those probes in where the area is gray, then less so. Still a little bit, but less so. Um, I think under ideal perfect conditions, there would be literally none. Okay, the last part of the lab actually asks us to go to light, and so we click slits, and the wave generator makes its waves. And instead of water waves, I'm going to use light. Because it's really, I mean, it, this phenomenon happens with water waves too, but there's, there's a famous experiment that deals with light and, and doing these kinds of experiments. So um, I'm going to use light instead. You can change the frequency, make it low frequency, long wavelength red high frequency, short wavelength, purple, but we'll keep it in the middle with green for now. And so there goes the green light, and you can see that here come the flat wave fronts, and then they hit that opening, and they, oh, they spread out around the opening. There's some diffraction for you. Now, that's, that's kind of, um, I mean, it is a wave phenomenon. It is light acting like a wave, um, but I'm not sure how testable that is. Uh, what is testable is if instead of one slit, you actually use two. Now, if you put two slits there with the screen, now you have two sources with the waves wrapping around the barrier. They are diffracting through those two sources. And what I wind up with on the other side is an interference pattern. You can see there's a line right here where there is where the waves are canceling. 
and right here where the waves are canceling, and then high contrast in the middle where you're getting constructive interference. So if I put a screen there, you can see that where the high contrast maximum constructive interference is, you get a bright line. Same thing with here, bright line, and here, bright line. But along this line of nodes where the uh, crests and the troughs are canceling, if a crest of one light wave meets a trough of another, they're going to cancel, and instead of a bright line, you get a dark line because the amplitude is lower. I think that pretty much captures what you guys need to know for the interference lab. Um, I just wanted to give you that walkthrough in case it's potentially helpful for you. Okay, thanks.